So now that Act 3 is out, it marks the end of Arcane, the conclusion to this story, and does it stick the landing? Well, I don't know. I had to rewatch it so many times, try to rationalize so many different things about how it completely changes the entire world of Runeterra that I couldn't properly get all my thoughts into one video like this and have it ready on time for today. Especially considering I have to spend all of Sunday working on a video that has to come out on Monday, which I can't talk about yet. So I think because there's so much that I want to talk about, there's so many ramifications for what this show has done to the League of Legends universe, I want to try and separate them because I do think there's been a massive wave of negativity going over the show for what it's changed. And I think just in case there is the opportunity that some extra material comes out trying to explain some certain things, I do want to at least today talk about the positives that I felt about Arcane Act 3, and then we'll have a follow-up video later this week talking about the negatives and the lore implications. This is obviously a spoiler warning if you haven't seen Arcane Act 3 yet. I'm going to be completely talking about spoilers here, so go watch it first and come back once you've seen it. First of all, obviously goes without saying, the artistic craft of Arcane is still at an absolute top-notch level, especially in Act 3, everything from sound design, music, and visuals, that final act with Victor and Jace being together and getting sucked into a wormhole or whatever that was, that whole scene is absolutely mesmerizing. The soundtrack I obviously really enjoyed, Come Play was probably one of my favorites in the series, and Heimerdinger singing Spin the Wheel was just wonderful. I don't think it hit quite the same peak as Sucker, Renegade, or Ashes to Blood. Act 1, I think, kind of has all the other acts beat in terms of music, but it's still, it's top-notch arcane music, visuals, and sound design. What did you expect? Of course it was going to be amazing. I think episode 7, the one with Echo and Jace traveling to the alternate realities, might be one of my absolute favorites in the entire series. I think just for me, I really enjoy seeing all these characters who have gone through so much strife, so much hardship, sacrificed so many things to see a version of these characters that actually got the happy ending. Well, you know, most of them. Powder never became Jinx, but she's still a genius. Milo and Clagger grew up, and Clagger got super buff, actually. Benzo is still alive and well. Vander and Silco still had their squabble, but they made peace. Zaun and Piltover made peace with each other. They're living in perfect harmony and getting to see those dynamics of all the different characters. It was kind of funny seeing Echo kind of repeat what happened in season one, where he was basically not present through the entirety of the show until episode seven. And it's the exact same thing here, where he's absent for pretty much the entirety of the first two acts, but has a major story beat here. And I really enjoyed that story beat, seeing him interact with everybody kind of in shock to see how well everyone's life is. Getting to give Benzo one last hug pulled at my heartstrings, seeing him interact with Vander. The fact that Vander said, oh, I've never seen them more alive. And he just looks at Vander like, yeah, yeah, more alive, you say, Vander. And getting to have that interaction with him and Jinx, or I guess still Powder, and having that romantic bond. I mean, we've kind of known for a long time, especially in Echo's voice lines, that they've had kind of a, a bit of a crush going on between each other. And now they've gotten to explore that even more as they grew up, which, you know, the Jinx Lux shippers are in absolute shambles right now. But I also think with Echo, they really integrated all the things that make him who he is in the League storyline really well, like the Z-Drive being this invention to help them get back to their reality, but also setting up the rules for it in a really cool way. He can only go back four seconds, else everything explodes, which I think that's not just a great storytelling device. It really limits what he can do. We can even see it in the finale where he's struggling to go back in time far enough until eventually he does go back far enough in time to do it intentionally to make a big explosion. That's really cool as it limits the character's ability to basically have a get out of jail free card, but also great reference to how his alt works in the game. And Echo in general just got a lot of great hero moments, especially in the last act of convincing Powder to be able to come and help the fight. Stopping Victor, like I think without Echo being there, Victor might have won. And we get that last somber moment where he really did, after everything, still want to be with Jinx. And now he can't because Jinx is supposedly dead? <laughs> The side thing with Jace, I really like the world they set up completely overtaken by the Hex Core, where every character was just this hollowed out husk of who they once were, and the people who were originally enlightened by Victor turned into these husks to represent the glorious evolution are still wandering around there. I thought it was some great visual storytelling, even if it got a bit confusing. It's like, I don't think they completely sold how deranged and crazy Victor became. I guess because there was this whole time skip of him being in the cave, we don't know how long he was actually in there for. And also Victor being revealed to be the one to send Jace back to kill his own Self. I think that was largely inferred that was going to be the case, but is Victor in this universe just some magical reality hopping time wizard that can give the gemstones to every Jace in every reality? Like, I don't really know what they're inferring there. I, I still think the wizard is just some random other guy. The random other guy had these tattoos on his finger. Victor didn't have that. Speaking of Victor, though, his design, I do really, really like the new design they gave for Victor. Victor, for me, has always been this character that feels just kind of half-baked. He's supposed to be this glorious revolution, the robotization of humanity to remove 
remove all human emotion, at least when they want him to be the villain. Some years they just want, oh no, actually he just wants to help people. I'll give you a cyborg arm to help you out. You don't have to be a full robot. So in this one, they really went in that way that I'm going to help everybody because they all need my help without their consent. And I think my favorite detail they had was his mask. I think the mask in League always felt kind of superfluous. Like, why wouldn't he just have a robot head? Why is he just wearing a thing to cover up his face when he could just turn his face into a robot? And I think mainly that exists on his design to try and make him scary, but it makes him look a lot more silly. I think in general, Victor's old design just looks incredibly silly. Not enough robotics having the long flowing cape and all these clothes and armor pieces and leg like, it's It doesn't look nearly robotic enough. Granted, this version doesn't look robotic either, but he looks almost entirely inhuman. And I think primarily that is because of how they changed his mask. You can see that his face is perfectly symmetrical, but the arcane literally ripped his face apart like it was boring out of his skull. So it's ripping apart at his identity to create a new one. It's why his lips don't move, his eyes don't move. It is just the arcane magic in the center and it looks horrifying in weird ways because it is so scary and unnerving, but is also perfectly symmetrical. Like Victor says, it is the exact middle point between order and chaos. And I just think that was incredibly well done. Changing the cloak as well to being this more long flowing cape, making him a lot more spindly. They still had the hex claw in there, which I was surprised that that even made an appearance. I thought they were going to remove that. And I think what they did with the glorious evolution is a lot more interesting than what they did in the base league lore. In the base league lore, he was all about trying to improve humanity by replacing them with robots and cybernetic augmentations. He was constantly flip-flopping between whether he was actually genuinely trying to help people or because he thought humanity was just a disease. So in this version, going in that direction, but also changing the glorious evolution to being fully assimilating everybody. He is so sick of humanity and their compassion and rage and emotion in general that he turns humanity into this androgynous hive mind of beings. And they were genuinely scary and unnerving, especially in the alternate timeline shenanigans with Jace. We were correct, it is what people tainted by the Hex Core will eventually turn into. But even when you had the new Glorious Evolution, the pristine version, they had these hollowed out heads. They were literally empty headed, no brains because they're not their own people anymore. And I think probably using Huck as the first one to do that, one who was probably one of the most emotional persons in the show, at least for the brief amount of time that he had on screen, you can see just how much of a perversion that is, how much you have lost this person entirely. It makes him a lot more threatening as a villain. And even though Victor's original goal was not a villainous one, the end goal and the methods that he's taking to achieve that end goal are terrifying. It makes him a lot more impactful as a villain, I think. And I did actually kind of like the closure they had with Sky. Sky has always been this character existing in the background, not really doing much of anything. It's not even clear whether she was actually the Hex Core or maybe, I guess, confirmed almost sort of now that Victor messing around with the Hex Core in season one and the Thanos snap that happened to Sky actually caused her consciousness to get absorbed into Victor. Because the way they talk to each other sounds like that they were both sharing the same mind. And when Victor's undergoing the glorious evolution, he's like, well, I guess this is goodbye. So him purging his humanity is also purging Sky. So I think Sky having her being a physical manifestation of what remains of Victor's humanity was really clever. And also just him saying, oh yeah, I will miss our talks. And Sky goes, no, you won't. <laughs> Which is true, he's purging himself of his humanity, so he's not gonna have any recollection, any love for Sky anymore. I thought that was well done for what little significance of a character that she was. Speaking of designs as well, I raved about Victor so much, I forgot to mention LeBlanc. And I am happy LeBlanc did not randomly all of a sudden take center stage out of nowhere. She was still more of a background character, so we got to see more of Ambessa. But I really, really like this new design for LeBlanc. Having her completely cloaked in shadows, minus her fingers, but also having that same kind of caved in open skull look that Victor and his Glorious Evolution robots did, that parallel to the corruption of the arcane. I think that was very clever. And also as an illusionist, someone who disguises herself all the time, that makes perfect sense. She would never ever show her true face, literally cloaked in shadows all the time, giving those bright glowing golden eyes, still having the face markings. Like I thought LeBlanc looked incredibly menacing for what little screen time she had. And I wish she actually looked like that all the time in League, but I know they're not going to do that. I don't know how Rad's going to change half the characters that appeared in this show. And I think lastly, in terms of design that I really liked was Oriana as well, which we only got to see little brief glimpses of, but it is a sort of middle way. It's not quite to the same degree as Victor's glorious evolution. It's enough that she has been revived again, but she still kind of looks like herself. That part of the story seemed more like sequel baiting. Like what's going to happen to Oriana now? She definitely is a completely different character with a completely different origin and a completely different father than we know of her in League of Legends. So I don't know what's going to happen to her. Riot's been so slow with visually updating champions. I don't know. And that's kind of the last positive because those character designs do kind of tie into the lore implications just how much this entire world has changed as a result of Arcane, and I will talk about that in the next video. So until that, 
Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. What are the things that you actually enjoyed about Arcane Act 3? I feel like the actual beauty of this show has been drowned out by the sea of people just absolutely losing their minds for how much is changed in the League lore. And I'm with you on that too. I'm making a whole follow-up video because of it, but I do want to at least take the time to appreciate this show for what has given us. The fact that we have actually had Arcane exist in the first place is just a marvel. So thank you for watching this rambly nonsense, fellas. Take care of yourselves and hopefully I will see you in the next video.